So let's look at the specific gravity of some minerals. So if you have a mineral like quartz, K feldspar, look at their specific gravity, their range. So all of these things we have here are heavier than water, if you check them relatively. And then we have some common minerals as well on this section, which then again, they are telling us about their specific gravities. So expected values for specific gravity of some types of soil. So rock too, we have got several of them and you can find that in the handout. And so you refer to them. And then that of soil, we have got sand being within this range, silty sand having this range in that order till you have organic soils. So let's take this example. In its natural state, a moist soil has total volume of this. So the total volume, it means if I take from this head to toe of my sample, I have this value. And then a mass of, now we know the mass, which is also WT. So I told you that some books will use mass or weight for the left side of the diagram. And so this time around, they are giving us masses. And so from this top to the bottom is 18.11. So then I have the sample being dried and then now the weight changes. So if the sample is dried, then it means the water is out. And so the value you have here now becomes the solids. And so that one is also given. And then you know your specific gravity given to you as 2.67. So they are asking us to compute for our moisture content. So how do I get moisture content? To know your moisture content, you are looking at the water content. So you are measuring that of your sample, okay? The weight of water, with respect to solid. So the value, the mass of the water over mass of the solid times 100, and that will give you moisture content. You are looking for void ratio. You are going to pick the volume of void to the volume of, so you are, void ratio becomes the volume of the void over the total, sorry, the volume of the solid. And then they are asking us to compute for our degree of saturation. And that one too, what are we seeking to do? So now looking for a degree of saturation, Degree of saturation, we know degree of saturation to be the volume of water you have got, which is this. The volume of water you have got over the volume of the entire void, VV. And that with these expressions, you should be able to compute for them. It will be a good time for you to try them and see if you get the answers. So now, relationships between various physical properties. Relationships. So all of these computations we shall be doing in this uh, lecture or chapter, mostly will be dealing with void ratio, porosity, degree of saturation, water content, unit with specific gravity. These are the six fundamental definitions you need to know and know how to derive them. And when you know how to play with these things, having one and being asked to find the other, having one, being asked to find this, all of that relationship, if you're able to get the relationship that exists among them, you are good to go when it comes to the phase relationship of either a porous rock or a given soil sample. So now, 
we are trying to give you some tips, but then you have to add some bits of logics as in how, when to use what and when to assume what. This is merely a guide for you to be able to maneuver or find your way out when you are giving any question. So now, use of this phase diagram in finding relationship of physical properties. So one, remember the following simple rules. Remember the basic definitions for these six guys we saw up here. And then the others, which you will find in textbooks. So then you have your water content or moisture content. You have your void ratio, specific gravity, saturation, porosity, and the like. So anytime you are giving a question, you can always go by way of calculating the thing from basic principles or by way of trying. So first principle is you drawing the phase diagram as we have seen in this question. So you draw the phase diagram to guide you solve it or you determine the relationships in the formulas and then however you intend to memorize. However, that will help you resolve the problem. But then it's always ideal for you to be able to sketch the diagram and help you derive them so that even if you don't remember the formulas, by way of the diagrams, you will need to uh, note some basic principles like the volume, volumetric ratios, the weight ratios and whatnot. And that can help you derive the others. So draw a phase diagram. You should know how to sketch the phase diagram and assume either, so depending on what values you are asked to compute or what values are given to you, you can assume your solids within the soil sample or the porous rock as one, or you assume the volume section, the total volume of the soil sample to be one, or you assume the weight of the solids to be one. So volume of solids being one, or the total volume being one. And then you have your weight of the solids being one. These are assumptions you can make. And then solve the phase diagram for the required values that have been given to you. So when I have been given void ratio, then I can easily say that the void ratio, you know the void ratio session is dealing with volume. And so if I assume that my solid samples within the soil is one, then the void will come and add onto it and that will increase the volume. And so the entire or the total volume of the soil sample becomes one plus the void ratio. And then the void ratio is being represented by the two sections, which is the air section, sorry, and then that of the water session. And then we have got, if situation where you are giving water content, then you can easily assume the weight of the solids to be one. And if you know weight of solids, it's always the weight of the solids plus weight of water that gives you the entire weight of the sample. So you are going to have one plus. So if you know all of this, then, you are going to have one plus W, okay? Which is this given to you. Then let's have a look at some equations. So what is the relationship that exists between your N and your E? So we know that if I have any given soil sample and I'm to find the volume, the void ratio, to find void ratio E, I need the volume of the voids over the volume of the solids within the sample. But then I know that to get the volume of the solids because it is always the volume of the air plus volume of solids plus volume of water. All of this together gives me the volume or total volume. So if I have been told that volume of, but then we know that the volume of that of air and the volume of water is together termed as volume of voids. So if the expression now becomes the volume, total volume of the sample is equal to 
the volume of void plus volume of solids. So if I have been told that E is equal to volume of void over volume of solids, then I can easily express this volume of solids to be what? The total volume minus volume of the void all over volume of void. And that is the expression we have here. So if I have that, and assuming I want to divide each of these things by the total volume I have, then what am I going to have? I will have the volume of the void here, which is the numerator over the total volume. Then again, I divide the volume here, which is the total volume over itself, minus the volume of void again over total volume. So remember that once you divide this, it becomes one. And this expression here is already porosity. Because if I measure the total empty spaces within a sample over the total sample, sample volume, total void spaces within the sample over the total volume of the sample, then I am looking for what we call porosity. So then I'm going to have one minus porosity. Then up here too, I'm going to have porosity. So what is the relationship that exists between void ratio and porosity? It is that when I have void porosity, I need the porosity, the porosity of the sample over one minus porosity, and that gives me the void ratio. And so if this is the expression I have, I can easily make n the subject of this equation and then arrive at this. So I have arrived at this system. So I have E is equal to n on one minus n. So I have E one minus n is equal to n. So I have E minus E n is equal to n. So now I want to make the dream is to make n the subject of the equation. So I have E is equal to n plus E n. So then E is equal to n made the subject one plus E. So dividing through by one plus E, one plus E. So at the end of the day, I have my n being equal to E on one plus E. So a situation where you are provided with certain parameters, you can easily use these relationships. Mm -hmm. This relationship, this one here, and then this one there to help you always. So if I'll highlight them in red, let's see. So I can have this relationship and that relationship to always help me out depending on which one I have been given. So in a situation where your phase diagram, you have been given E and they tell you to look for N. What is the relationship there? We've been told that where you are given E, you can assume your volume of the solids to be one. And then you know that that of the volume of water and volume of air, which is volume of void, can be taken as the porosity from the relationship we established. So then, Summing these two up from the phase that the earlier phase diagram we saw, we are going to have this expression here. So having this expression, and I'm looking for porosity, it's easy to come by because we said volume of void is equal to the total volume. But now on this phase diagram, my E is representing the volume of void here. And then the total volume now becomes one plus E. And so when I am giving void ratio, I can easily find a relationship that exists between these two guys using this expression. And that's what we found earlier. 